Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Dane Sanders and I want to welcome you to this conversation. Uh, we've been having this conversation now for a very long time. If I do my math right, it's it's well over 200 episodes now and I think if I, I can't believe this, it doesn't seem right, I think I've only been doing this for three years, but if I do the math, that's closer to four because uh, I think we started in, started in January some year and uh, that that is a lot of conversation and um, this particular one, I think, is going to air the final week of 2012. And um, assuming the Mayans are wrong and we're all still here, um, this, I think, could be a very significant conversation for a lot of you to pay attention to. Uh, not because uh, myself or my guest has anything um, in and of ourselves to say that's that important, but to really encourage, I want to encourage you specifically with today's conversation to pay attention to your own internal dialogue, the conversation that's happening inside of you as you're listening to what we're chatting about. Because um, I think today has the potential, at least, uh, to stir some good things up for you. Uh, this show uh, has been called a lot of things. Uh, it's been called <laughs> on air and off air. Um, but I think it, the original show is called uh, Ask Dane. And then we had these little video shorts, uh, like 24 of those or something. And then we did. Um, fast track coaching for a long, long time. More recently, we've adopted, and by say, when I say we, I really just mean me, um, adopted this new word called converge, uh, and it's a word that I just can't uh, shake um, lately. So now that these conversations are called Benjamin and Edwards and Dane Sanders converge, because that's what we're doing. We're hanging out. Uh, so without further ado, I want to introduce my guest, Benjamin. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Dane. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, my pleasure. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, Benjamin hails from Bend, Oregon, which is this hotbed of talent. Um, and I, I'm actually tempted to be uh, a little facetious when I say that, but it's actually ridiculously true. For the per capita amount of people that are there, uh, if it's just you and the Kubotas, uh, you've already uh, broken some <laughs> records. But it's not just you two. There's a lot of uh, significant creative up there. Uh, but why don't you give folks a little bit of context for uh, who you are and uh, what's your because uh, I think people know about you whether they know that they know about you and I'll talk about that in a minute ah interesting okay uh, yeah I'm just uh, I'm just a guy man uh, a photographer in Bend Oregon and uh, you know 10 actually almost 12 years ago uh, Kevin Kubota shot my wedding and uh, uh, I just fell in love with the power of the lens and uh, you know I joke around like any good photography client I became a photographer myself <laughs> and uh, so but there are there's there's so many photographers here in Bend I, I think we have a population of about 80,000 90,000 and I've heard I haven't I haven't double checked this but um, photographers per capita I think we're number two in the nation huh so there's a ton of photographers here um, but an amazing community of photographers uh -huh. um, like we we love to work together we love to get together and, and um, you know do fundraisers and that sort of thing. So, um, in in that respect, super blessed to to be in Bend. So, so is that when you say that, um, it's number one Santa Barbara or what's the other? I haven't checked, but I'm okay. I'm curious. I'll have to look that up. And uh, it, you... it's a similar demographic. I mean, Santa Barbara has about eighty thousand people, and they have Brooks. Um, so they kind of have this built-in flood of new yeah. photographers that keep showing up. Yeah. But but they don't have the same kind of community that you're describing. Um, at least in my experience. No, and I, I think a lot of that really um, was fostered by Kevin. You know, when, when they moved here and, and they saw the need for um, photographers to start to get together, and so Kevin was a huge part of that in getting people together, and um, uh, people have kind of taken the reins from that. And, and there's a photographers network here that's uh, that's super super cool. So yeah, blessed to blessed to be here with these people for sure. That's great, man. Well, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Benjamin, in addition to his photography efforts, uh, he's also a bit of a humanitarian, uh, both globally and locally. Um, he, it, the, the, a moment ago, I mentioned that you may have gotten to know Benjamin. Uh, he was the backbone, really, behind uh, our Escalate Live, the second concert we did, concert, that's hilarious, uh, event, uh, conference, um, that we did out in um, Illinois a few years back. Uh, but he also, uh, out of a labor of love, um, had a dear friend named Jen, and you made a video that a lot of people paid attention to. So why don't you share a little bit about that experience? Yeah, um, so Jen Burgess-Thompson, uh, a photographer here in, in the Bend area, 
uh, many of many of you know um, she did some work with Big Folio and she's a fantastic designer photographer um, she loved to design studios for people and office spaces um, was diagnosed with um, with cancer uh, a little over a year ago and um, obviously it was a huge shock to to many of us and uh, uh, yeah this is it's it's kinda hard to talk about um, when she was diagnosed, we were, we were planning on doing a, a little family video for her um, before she would di was diagnosed. She wanted to kind of document her family, which I think is important for all of us to do. Hmm. Um, so we had that kind of set up, and then once she was diagnosed with cancer, we had to move it up um, because she knew she was going to start chemo and start losing her hair. And so we moved it up to, um, I mean, it, it was like immediate, and uh, fortunately, um, at the time, I asked Kevin Kubota to come along, and uh, Craig Strong was in town as well. No kidding. Yeah, pretty rad. Uh, so, Craig. And for those of you guys who don't know, Craig Strong is the guy who's behind Lens Baby, and uh, this fraternity of you three are kind of ridiculous. But keep, keep going. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, you know, I, I texted Kevin, and and uh, I was like, "Hey, do you want to come and do this?" And of course, Kevin. I mean, he. He is like the epitome of friend. He will drop anything to be there for anybody, and I appreciate about that. That about well, it's him. funny you say that because I was with him one time, and somebody called, and he just dropped me like a an old hat. <laughs> right. <See that>? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he's he's like that uh, in a good, positive way. And um, Craig was with him. He's like, Craig's here. Do you mind if Craig comes? And I was like, Are you kidding me? Let's let's go do this. So we we drove up into the mountains uh, here outside of Bend, and and Jen brought her family, and obviously it was a super crazy emotional time um, and we were we, we felt like we were really working against time not you know the sun was setting and we felt like oh my gosh you know what's gonna happen with Jen so um, it, it was an interesting feeling of we're working against time but time has kind of stood still mm -hmm. and um, it was this incredible sunset uh, that, that was taking place and we just played in the light we just you know her with her kids and and husband and just just the family being the family mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of things changed for me during just that that brief hour um, it really caused me to look at my life and where my uh, priorities are and just how important it is for us just to to hug our kids mm -hmm. and uh, and to document that I think you know a lot of times photographers were kinda like the the cobbler and that you know the the kids don't have any shoes or the where the construction worker and the house is falling apart, we have this ability to document life. But um, for a lot of us, I know it, it has in my life. Our, my family goes undocumented, so it's something I'm I'm trying to be better at. But um, getting back to the video, we we had a, an editor friend of mine put it together, and and it was just kind of this convergence of you know these three photographers, you know, doing video and stills, and just kind of put it together. And Jen picked um, some music that she wanted, and you know that meant something to her. And um, it was just this kind of explosion of of life being celebrated in this short piece. And it was never meant to go viral. It was, you know, we didn't think it would really go outside of her house. And um, but once she posted it, it just it went crazy. And I think it has well over a hundred thousand views right now on Vimeo. And um, I think it's just inspiring people. You know, obviously it's hard to watch because for many of us who knew Jen, she was just this free spirit who wore flip-flops throughout the winter and loved life and loved her kids. And um, especially as a parent, it's hard to watch that separation. Mm -hmm. um, this this wonderful mom who, um, you know, is going to lose her kids. And um, it was difficult to watch, but at the same time, I think people saw the beauty of it too. So, uh, carry the story further for those who no, don't know how her story. Like she didn't lose her kids; her kid lost kids lost her. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, through through a series of of fights, uh, you know, chemotherapy, Jen not long ago uh, lost her battle with cancer, and. Um, Again, I think for, for a lot of us, it really just makes us kind of internalize and look look at our own lives. But, you know, she got to spend a lot of time with her kids, um, which was important. And um, 
her her celebration, her her memorial was amazing. So many people turned out. We actually had it live streamed, and uh, you know, many many people uh, tuned in from all around the world. Um, she had such a huge impact on people, and not people who just knew her personally, but people who knew her through the video. I had people email me and say, you know, I want to send a letter or something, but I feel like um, I didn't even know her, so is that wrong? Right. And I was like, man, you know what? If she had an impact on your life, you guys knew each other. Like, there was a connection there, and I think that makes it even more powerful. Um, I, I think that we we often underestimate the effect that we have on other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And Jen's story was a huge part of that. You know, she talked about, you know, you know she was a very faithful woman. She said, you know, what, what if I'm not healed? What if, you know, what if um, God doesn't take this from me? What, what happens then? Do people not believe? And mm -hmm. I think the story was, was even larger than that. It was, um, she had such an effect on people's lives because of the tragedy that she was going through. So many people have, have looked at their own lives and, and kind of taken a step back and said, okay, what's really important here? Yeah. And uh, I think the effects of that will never be known. Well, uh, the story itself is not only historical, it's live for many folks that have a chance to um, pay attention. Uh, in fact, when we post this on the on the blog, there'll be a link and they can go and check it out if they're interested to see what, what Benjamin was talking about. Um, but in addition to it being a historical reality, it's a current reality. Like you said, it, it has impact. It causes people to pause. And as you and I were chatting before um, we went on sort of broadcasting, um, I was sharing with you how I'm in the midst of a little bit of a, a not a little bit, a, a fundamental internal shift mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm pretty scared of and excited about. Um, you had mentioned that uh, you have that similar experience every kind of season or so, and uh, I remember, I, I, well, it's not every year. I don't know what it is about December. Uh, it's the same month my dad died. It's the same month, you know, it's the end of the year. It's nostalgic. There's so much kind of mixed feelings going on at the end of the year, and I always like to kind of launch into a new year uh, with with a bit of a fresh slate. And I've been carrying some legacy issues. Um, uh, amazing things when they were birthed and now sometimes it can feel like weights that I'm carrying. Um, and I say all this as, as context as the final show of the year for Fast Track Coaching or Converge or whatever the heck we call it. Uh, to have you on and for people to be engaging this, whether it be at the end of the year or maybe they're picking it up in the beginning or sometime next year, but they're paying attention to not only the circumstances around them, but the internal drive, the, the muse, the thing that's interrupting um, uh, average or mundane, and they're, they're needing to answer a call to something, even if they don't know what it is. So I give all that as context uh, for us to just have a real open dialogue for the rest of our time around what that process looks like, uh, around what, is it, what does it mean to take pause and pay attention, uh, especially in the kind of the everydayness of life, to quote Walker Percy, that that sense of mundane or average or uh, you know another. Last night I was with a uh, you know I won't mention who it is and people won't connect the dots on this, but I was at a client meeting last night and I was unbelievably uninspired um, as I was doing a viewing with them and uh, that's a problem I, I, when I began it. When, that's rare and when it happened I thought I need to I need to stop for a second and and pay attention so. I'm saying too much. I want to hear more from you, Benjamin, around th what this this process that I'm kind of pointing at and poking toward, what that's like for you uh, when when it occurs to you that you need to take stock. Yeah. Well, as as we mentioned, um, <clears throat> and I, by the way, I just I gotta say, Dan, I'm super excited. Whatever this new season is for you, um, super excited uh, for you to take a step back and see you know, where you're headed and um, something that I appreciate about you so much, Dane, is just you're like a, um, I don't know, you just get things done. Something pops in your mind and you're a man of action and I appreciate that. I think all too often we have a lot of great ideas um, and then we just sit on them and nothing happens. And I think it's much better to attack and fail and learn from it mm -hmm. than to just sit back and, and do nothing. And I, I super appreciate that about you. So, Thanks, Benjamin. That means yeah. that it really, it, you have no idea 
you know how, how significant that is for me. But but let's keep going. So yeah, yeah. Tell me about your process. Uh, well, I'm still I'm still working through my process. Um, you know, when I when I look at my own um, business, I want my business to uh, fuel my personal um, my personal projects, my life, my family. I don't want my business to own me, and I think that that's something that a lot of people struggle with when they own a business is it's wearing me down. And so I've got kind of an interesting business model in that. Um, I'm definitely in it to succeed, but I'm not in it to. Um, I, I don't want my business to to overtake my priorities and my family and and my personal life. So, I don't think I could walk into a bank and get a loan for my business based on what I call the two knees approach. And that's where I just get on my two knees and I say, God, what's <laughs> what's next? Because I don't know. Right. The coolest things that have ever happened to me in my life, in my business, have been a result of. Um, you know, God, my wife, and my friends. And whenever I interject what I really am pushing for in that, it just crumbles. Mm. So, uh, you know, I, I believe there are people who are meant to be, um, you know, dreamers and, and idea people, um, and that's great. They they need to be those people. But for me, I kind of sit back and just take stock and say, okay, what's what's out there? And um, but I think it's super important for us to to stop every now and then because um, the mundane and the day to day tasks, those little things that are on our to do list, um, in a way, are are um, they're stopping us from really looking at what our our calling is. And uh, another thing that that I think is super dangerous is comparison. We talked about that before we started. And so, how often do we, um, as artists, as as uh, you know, creators look at other people's work or what they're doing, even in their business, you know, even looking at you, Dane, and saying, wow, Dane's doing all these cool things. I wish I could do those cool things. Mm -hmm. And um, it just slows us down. It makes us stop in our tracks. And, and um, I think we need to, to really look at comparison and say, um, I'm not going to do this. I'm better than this. And the best thing for me to be is myself and what does that look like so really going through a process of examining what is it that I want out of my life what is what is important to me is it family is it business I guarantee you with Jen you know the last weeks of her life she wasn't thinking about her business she wasn't saying man I wish I worked more I wish mm. I would have done this differently in my client meeting or I should have done this marketing piece or whatever those kinds of things, it's, it's important for us to concentrate on our businesses and grow them and be good stewards, but those types of things are not what we're going to be known for. They're not what our legacy is going to be. Um, our legacy really lies in, I think, our family and what are we doing for our kids? What are we doing to inspire them to be who they're supposed to be? Mm -hmm. What example are we giving them? Well, let, let's talk about that for a second, because I, I, I am with you. I am with you, especially when it comes to the um, the description of it. When I look about it in retrospect, uh, there's a sense in which, like Jen is a great example, the last two weeks of her life, of course she's not going to be spending any energy around her business. But no one, you know, that severe gift she was given of knowing her 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 kind of last season or window, or seemingly so, that she was in a tough one and her priorities needed to line up. I get that, especially in those acute moments, there's this need to reprioritize and the things that it re really are kind of important at the highest level, they rise very quickly. But there's also the sense of, not but, and, there's also the sense of transcendence in the process. Like, part of me hopes that I'm whatever I'm doing with my business, and this is what caused me to pause even last night and this morning having my existential crisis in the shower where things are you know, <laughs> popping about things to think and, right. and do and um, uh, I was reflecting on well whatever I end up doing in this next season um, I want it to be the kind of thing that I would do in my final days otherwise what am I what, what are my because these are all of our final days we just don't know it I was just gonna say that we are all dying we really <laughs> are yeah. yeah and that's a that's not a morose thing per se right. it's it's just reality yeah um, so if that is so how indeed am I building if I'm gonna build be an entrepreneur if I'm gonna build something how can I do it in such a way that I mean it really does take a tremendous amount of creativity and chutzpah to get anything created I mean 
just go make a website, and it's ridiculous how much effort it takes, or a video, or you know, all these finished products. I just um, I'm waited on on the edge of my seat. I keep going down and checking the, the mail because I I supported Seth Godin and his Kickstarter project with the uh, Keras project, and I signed up for the no-brainer option. And if you guys follow Seth, you know what I'm talking about. And I have this big package coming. It's it's apparently it's enormous. I've seen everyone on the internet who are cool people get one of these big packages and they're putting they're doing these opening parties and they're putting it all on display and I haven't even seen the stupid thing and and I'm sitting here just going like how the heck does Seth do it how does he align how, how does he make it all come together how does it make it all converge and um uh somehow he's found a pattern where he just that's that is his life that is his business he ships he makes it all come together and it gets out and i look at that and i think man that is meaningful work but could could that could that be built in such a way where it's not just about the product but somehow the process of creating those things is inherently in alignment with the things that you just mentioned are so critical these friends these family like how can i create stuff with my with my daughter, uh, with uh, my other daughter, with my other daughter, or my son, or can, my, can Tammy and I do something that would be creative, uh, even if they don't have the similar personality or disposition that I have? So I, I say, again, I, I talk too much because I get excited when I hang out with people like you, Benjamin. Uh, but talk to me a little bit about what you're making up in your head as I'm throwing out these these contextualized ideas, and and how people should respond to those. You know, I, my wife and I were just talking about this, and, and I think um, even after 12 years of marriage, we forget that we are, um, that we get to play house. Hmm. Uh, we don't have to, we get to. I think there's a big difference there. And really, um, especially being self-employed, we can, within reason, do whatever we want. And we, we get bogged down in these daily tasks and chores and forget that, gosh, if there's this amazing woman in Africa that has her whole life wanted to come to the U.S. and speak and be blessed by that experience and touch other people's lives by speaking here. Why can't we bring her here? Why can't we go back to Africa again and, and help there? Why can't we get involved locally in our community? Um, so I, I think just realizing that w we can do those things, and, and Dane, you can do all of those things that you want to do, and you just have to fill in the blanks. You just have to take the time to step back and fill in those blanks and say, well, what can I do? And, and I think we also we get bogged down by thinking that it has to be this huge thing. Um, gosh, how can I create the next help portrait? Or how can I create this, this next right. huge thing? A Karis project, right. Right. Oh, yeah. And we forget that, that it's really the small things in life that can really snowball and create change. And whether they have this massive impact or not, if we've changed one life, if, we, if we've affected one person in a positive way, we have literally changed the world. And what better way to do that than with your daughter or your wife or just working around you know, the, the people around you. Something, something I love uh, that Kevin started um, even before Help Portrait is Family Photo Day in the Park where yeah. Yeah. You know, he gets um, you know, families who are, are in need together in this park through these different organizations and 400 people come and and they get their family photo taken for Christmas, and he gets area photographers together to, to help work on that. And, you know, it's, it, it, it doesn't happen all around the world, but it happens here, and it makes a difference. So I think, you know, breaking it down and, and realizing that, yes, we can do it. What is it that we want to do? And just begin, you know, yeah. just start. It's funny ha having the privilege of being friends with both Jeremy Cowart, who does Help Portrait, and Kevin uh, I, I think Kevin's probably happier of the two, <laughs> and and I say that because you know the other side of of creating something that's big is it's burdensome. Uh, there's a, there's a boatload of things to carry with it, and oftentimes the thing that gets created can fall out of alignment with the initial germination of what was initially put right. together. And yeah. um, you know the human project of uh, you know the Garden of Eden comes to mind. <laughs> like it was so simple. Two people, yeah. you know, just don't don't screw it up. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I'll never I'll never forget sitting across from from Jed, uh, Vicky and Jed, and and we were talking about business and and he laid it out there for me and and 
because uh, I was examining where, where I was and where I thought I might want to be and he said, you know, you build something you build something big like that and it's your baby, but the bigger it gets, the bigger the diaper gets and what comes along with that, basically, you know, so um, right, yeah, I mean you can build this huge thing, but you still have to change the diaper and big babies produce, you know, yep. big boobs, so that's uh, right. It was very Jed, but <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, at the same time, uh, you know, the work that, that Jeremy's doing is fantastic and, and uh, really is an inspiration to so many people. Yeah. Well, okay, so let's talk about the folks who are at home and they're listening in and they're, they're, um, they're thinking, okay, this is all well and good. Uh, when I have these icons in my head, the Jeremy's, the Seth's, uh, the, the Benjamin's, candidly, uh, that's who I think about. Um, uh, the Kevin's when those folks are in mind and the, and people are caught in this envious comparison game um, if they want to interrupt that it seems like the obvious answer is well just interrupt it like stop paying attention to those those folks that can be inspiring yeah, um, so and deep. get and get to making something yeah. um, and this idea of going out and making something um, both in my own life and and in, I, I definitely hear this a lot from a lot of the folks I, I have a chance to talk with there is this moment of paralysis of, gosh, I'm nervous that I, I want to go make something that whether it be local or on a grand scale or whatever level, and I'm looking at this next year or next couple years, I want to get out there and go do it. Um, but I'm trying to sort through, how do I pick the right thing? Or how do I pick the project that's going to matter that I'm supposed to do? Right. And at least for me, my internal tape keeps saying to myself, um, don't, don't pick the wrong one. You know, and I can spend all year, you know, sorting through all the reasons why I shouldn't pick that one and shouldn't pick that one. Uh, how how do you deal with that dynamic? Assuming you can relate to what I'm talking about. Oh, I can totally relate, and and I think first getting back to the paralysis. Um, well, first of all, like separating ourselves from. For example, there was a a, a very well known um, photographer that that I had a lot of respect for. But personally, you know, candidly, I, I was like, there was a whole lot of comparison happening there, and it was actually, um, it was really weighing me down. It was like, how can I ever achieve this? Mm. And I was losing sight of who I was, so I actually just stopped following the person altogether and just had to <laughs> put on my big boy pants and have some separation there until I could yeah. handle it again. Yeah. And I think that's very important, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we have to separate ourselves from the things that are, are weighing us down, so... Mm -hmm. Um, just a just quick little side plug on that. I mean, that idea of a kind of a healthy or clear boundary. Um, I say this all the time. Whenever I, I talk about my own book and my not-so-subtle product placement behind me, um, no one ever buys my book. But when I recommend somebody else's book, they all go out and get it. And this is one of those cases. I hope you do go out and get this. But there's this guy named uh, Henry Cloud who wrote a book called uh, Changes That Heal. And, uh, and he has a whole one quarter of the book is on the boundary section that you're describing and that you can't really be an adult unless you have a capacity to set a boundary. So um, and I can relate to exactly what you're describing. I, there's someone very clear in my mind, and, and, and people can do the math on this pretty quickly, but who had a huge impact on me early in my career, but there were some things that became toxic, and I take a lot of responsibility for that, uh, if not most of the responsibility. And I literally had to like excavate myself from the relationship, even with a great esteem for the individual. Um, and I just for for those of you who are wrestling with those kinds of dynamics, I love that you said like it's just okay. You have to have freedom to that. So if that's step one, then then what? Well, um, again, just examining what it is that you're gifted at. I think we we need to know our gifts, and I think a lot of times we're limited to what we do for a living. But that's not really who we are. I mean, sometimes we're lucky enough and blessed enough. You know, Dane, you and I, we get to take photographs for a living and do other things. Uh, for some people, it's a hobby, and they love to do it, and that's how they give back. But I think really boiling down, what am I, what am I gifted at? And there, there are different tools um, that you can find to kind of help you, you know, talking to friends and um, different tests that you can take and things. But um, sure. most of the time, it's just in your heart. So what are you good at? And maybe it deals with a camera. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's something else that you're supposed to do. Yeah. And I think being okay with that is important. Um, I'm constantly trying to hold loosely onto my business and say, you know what, if something else comes along that I'm supposed to do, then I need to let go of this. That doesn't mean I can't take photos, but maybe I'm not supposed to do it for a living. So mm -hmm. what are your gifts? And then surround yourself with people 
who can offer good insight and good counsel. I think we've kind of lost that um, in our society. We just kind of want to, we, we kind of see a pattern over here, oh, this is what so-and-so is doing, I want to do the same thing. Get people around you who can kind of speak into your life and look at you and say, well, you know what, you're really good at this. And maybe you say, oh, I haven't thought about that. So um, surrounding yourself with amazing people is a, is a great starting point too. And, and then being okay with um, starting down a road and realizing that it's a dead end because at least you've traveled somewhere and you, you learn from that, you take away from that. Um, you were mentioning, you know, you could, you know, don't pick the wrong one. Mm -hmm. um, you're right. You can wrestle with that for, for so long that, you know, by the time you're finished making up your mind, someone else or 10 other people have come up with this other idea and they're off to the races and you decide, oh, I just, I don't want to do that anymore. And so I think just engaging is super, super important. You know, it's it's a bunch of things are are coming up for me as you're talking. One that just flashed as as you said that was that old um, proverbial story that Jesus tells about the people who had three sets of talent. You know, a lot of talent, middle talent, and little talent. Right. And uh, you know, you know, setting aside any of your faith traditions just for a second to consider that this person who claimed to be the God of the universe actually had significant judgment for the one person who took what they had and buried it compared yeah. to the other two who just did something and uh, and out of that they it bore fruit it created something more than the initial thing that was put in them right. and uh, man is that 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 causes me to pause um, just for and what it's worth the other thing that I that I'm struck by and it's amazing to me how deeply spiritual all these conversations are but um, I feel like what I hear you know the little angel and devil on my on my uh, maybe it's just me. I hear voices. Nobody else does. But <laughs> the voices that I have on my shoulders um, that I hear a lot on the negative side is, uh, yeah, don't screw it up. Get the wrong one. But the one that, that, that hunt, like hams uh, strings me over and over and over again is um, the cocktail party dilemma. Uh, you know, you show up at a cocktail party, even if it's just in my head, because I don't go to many cocktail parties. But if I did, this is what happens in these conversations. I show up. It's not a bunch of similar people. It's a bunch of really successful people in all these individual industries. So it's like a room full mm -hmm. of, of, you know, uh, all of my all of my crushes, like the Seth Godin's of the world. Like they're all in the room, and I show Bono's there too, you know. And um, he wants to chat. He wants to see, you know, what I do. And he comes up. He says, "So what do you do?" And that so what do you do? Question. And I'm with you, man. I I, I wrote a book about identity, and I packaged it as a photo book, but it's. The whole idea is figure out who you are and you know roll roll out of that, and you aren't your job. And yet, this is the you know my big contradiction. I get hamstrung by the. It's probably why I wrote it. I get hamstrung with this question of without claiming identity to it, just giving indicators on a social level for people to thoughtfully engage me for for me to feel known, but to be able to package it in a socially acceptable way that people can get. So I could say like I'm a plumber. Everyone gets that, but I don't get to say I'm a plumber. I get to, you know, am I a photographer? Well, he, well, sure, I take pictures, but I sure hope it's more than that. And am I a writer? Well, yeah, but I, I haven't written a book since 2010, so I, I sure hope it's more than that. So, so you see the dilemma. Right. How do you deal with the cocktail party problem? That's a great question. Um, and I think it all goes back to just being yourself and, and trying not to uh, project upon yourself what other people are in the room. and. Um, for me, it's it's kind of asking the question um, to the question and saying, what am I passionate about or what do I do for a living? And um, sometimes they align, sometimes they don't. For me, like my passion is the humanitarian work, the, the work in Africa, Central America, um, you know, that kind of thing. That is the conversation piece. That is where you can um, not just be yourself, but in my case, I mean, you can really inspire someone who might just be quote unquote a lawyer maybe they have the same feelings maybe they're walking into the cocktail party thinking I'm just a lawyer but they're not there's something else that they've been given probably a gift that they could use that um, can really have an, an impact on the world and so who knows where that conversation goes when you are yourself instead of projecting something onto yourself hmm. saying you know what this is what I'm passionate about and again for some of us it might you know it might be I'm a photographer, and that's what I'm passionate about. Right, and feel great about it. That's and perfect. feel great, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
man, uh, that that subtle distinction of breaking apart. Um, because because you're right. Like it, it's a pretty easy question to answer. So what pays the bills? Because you can actually point to well, where did money come from? And say well, you know, I I make money from that thing. But what do I care about or am passionate about or whatever? Um, that's that is a conversation that could be more universally accessible. And I think that's that's a gift, man. I I wish we had talked about eight years ago. That would have been helpful. Thanks. <laughs> well, I think too. Dude, yeah. <laughs> I think people, whether they know it or not, they want. Earthquake? What's going on? <laughs> Earthquake and bend, volcano. <laughs> uh, can you still hear me now? Uh, almost. Okay, good. Um, your, mic, so, your mic's a little off. I'm not sure. I can't totally hear you. Is it okay? Better, that's, better? That's better. Yep, okay. thanks. I think whether people know it or not, um, I think they want to have those real conversations. And it's it's kind of like saying, hey, how you doing? I mean, it's it's like this nicety and and... We have to, you know, break the ice. But I think that people, whether they know it or not, want to have those deeper conversations. Mm -hmm. And so when we are ourselves and talk about our passions, it's kind of a gateway into that. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I just think it's super important to to just be yourself in those situations for sure. Now, there, I know there's some folks at home who, who again, admire folks who are passionate about various things, and they think that they're not passionate. They think they have an everyday, boring little life. And uh, when people ask the question, what are you passionate about, they're actually a little overwhelmed by the question because they're like, I don't know. Uh, again, and the envious comparison kicks in and some other pieces to it. Um, what are other ways to frame the what are you passionate about question? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, as simple as what do you like to do? I mean, <laughs> uh, what do you do in your spare time? I mean, getting I think getting outside of the work um, kind of module is important. The work box, uh, mm -hmm. because I, in our society, especially, that is what defines us, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, in society's eyes. But it's it's really not our definition. Um, you know, I think somebody who pumps gas for a living has just as much chance to change the world as somebody who, you know, is a lawyer or a doctor. Um, so, yeah, I mean, different ways to phrase it. it. Just as simple as, what are your interests? And if if they don't know their interests, then they need, they need to take a step back and, and <laughs> get away from the, the, little, the little items on a to-do list and, and look at the big picture, yeah. uh, which I think we all need to do from time to time, for sure. Absolutely, man. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so you're going into a new year, mm -hmm. and, and this is a two-pronged question, and, and we'll finish up with this. Um, although, bless your heart, man, you, you are coming back to this dialogue, whether you <laughs> like it or not, whether I have to break down your door and bend. Um, but... Uh, the, the two-pronged question is, number one, what are you doing as you finish up 2012 and are going to 2013? What's, what's in your head, your mind space? And the, and the second question, which will be related, is um, any kind of final words of advice or input or counsel or whatever. How, I don't care what you just you call it, but you're sitting down with coffee and with somebody who's saying, like, man, 2013, I know I have pressures to pay the bills, but it's kind of wide open. What advice do you give them? But let's start with you first. What are you yeah. doing? Um, so, so prong one um, is to live outside of myself. And uh, what I mean by that, I, I think Jen was a great example of that. So um, a few months before Jen passed, uh, I was contacted by a family in Vancouver, Washington. It was a young pastor, and um, he was diagnosed with a terminal form of, of brain cancer, really rare, hmm. and very young family, um, just a beautiful family. But they wanted a video similar to what we did for Jen. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, obviously, we, we went down and or we, we wanted to do it. And I, I had this idea. I thought, you know, what if, what if I invite Jen to come along? Hmm. Because Jen could relate on a level that n no one else could, you hmm. know, knowing what they're going through. And just a chance for her to kind of give back. And um, I approached her with it, and she was all for it, 100% hmm. sold. And the day before we went to Vancouver to, to shoot this, Jen found out that her cancer had returned um, with a vengeance. I mean, it was, yeah. it was back, and it was back big. And uh, she received some counsel from friends saying, you know what, don't, don't go to Vancouver. Just You need to take a step back for yourself and figure hmm. out what you're going to do. And something I'll never forget, and that I respect so much um, about Jen, 
was that she decided to go on this trip and be involved despite what she had just learned to give of herself to this family who was going through something similar mm. and to kind of share that burden. Mm. And it makes me take a step back and, and look at how life is so beautiful when we share, we're, we're meant to share each other's burdens. Um, we can learn so much when we do that. And so Jen, in, in that example, is um, the epitome of living outside of yourself. And the blessing that the family had, I mean, they, they got beautiful images and, and a beautiful video for their family that those children will be able to grow up and, and see imagery of their dad. And um, I just have huge respect for Jen for that. So, you know, I, I want to live outside of myself. And what does that look like for my business? I don't know. I just know that it's a good way to live. And the best things that have happened to me in my business have been a result of personal projects or things like that where I'm just using my gifts. Mm. And if I get to pay the bills, great. Um, mm. So yeah, I live in outside myself. Mm. So you're sitting down, I mean, I, I, you already answered the question. Uh, if you're staring at somebody down the barrel of a coffee mug and uh, they are wrestling with, you know, you know, let's say they're, <laughs> this is so funny, I have a friend who's 42 and you're talking to them and you want to give them advice, you know, <laughs> what would you tell my friend and I'll pass it along. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, uh, so Dane, uh, <laughs> first and foremost, we have to be ourselves and we need to take the time to examine what that means. What are the gifts that we've been given? What are the priorities in our life? We have to do that. If we're too busy um, with our day-to-day -day tasks to think about who we are, then we're too busy. And we need that quiet time to get away, to reflect and figure out what, what the hell are we doing? What is important? Um, so I would encourage whoever that is, if they don't know the answers to those questions, they have to find those answers. Um, that doesn't mean you need to take a journey to India for three months and, you know, find yourself. It means you just, <laughs> which could be cool. Right. Um, you just need some quiet time. Mm -hmm. um, and something that I loved about, about Escalate was this whole idea of being boutique um, was really just the idea of being you. yourself. Right. It's just yeah. being yourself because you have something that, um, no one else in the world can offer, which goes beyond taking pictures, right? I mean, we can, as photographers, we can all deliver a nice image, but there's something that goes well beyond that. And what that thing is might take some time to figure out. Um, but it's more important than what we do for a living. Mm. So, yeah. Wow, dude. Benjamin, what a treat to have you on this conversation. And uh, I know there's folks at home that are going to benefit. I hope more people pay attention to it. Um, but I, I'm just grateful to be your friend, and uh, I am going to call you if you still have a few moments immediately after this. Uh, some things I want to chat about, but uh, I know I'm speaking for a lot of people when I say uh, thanks for being a part of this conversation. Thanks for helping me close up 2012. Who knows what 2013 holds? But um, I will say this. Um, this has been a ma an amazing run, and for all of you folks who paid attention to this uh, all these years, I sure am grateful to you. Um, the very first Fast Track Coaching-ish thing, whatever we called it, uh, had uh, special guest Kevin Kubota on. Uh, it was audio back then only. Um, actually, I'm spending a lot more time thinking about audio. Uh, but um, it's fun to uh, start and bend, end and bend, and, and who knows, reinvent in 2013 and see what, what that could look like. Also, a huge thanks to Adorama for underwriting this uh, for this last little while, this whole year, and um, look forward to seeing what's next in all those categories. But thanks again, Benjamin, for being here, and uh, hopefully we'll see all you guys soon and very soon. Thanks, Dan.